Hello and good morning friends. Today I want to talk to you about what is a hydraulic load test? Why are they used? What are they for? All are good questions and I hope that we can get some answers. Let's get into it. So hydraulic load test. You might have heard this term before, especially used whenever you're having a septic inspection, right? And you might be wondering, what does that mean? It's kind of a complicated question. So hydraulic load is generally going to be the, uh, the available amount of water that you're able to put through a system, right? Basically what you're doing is you're testing the design spec of that system. So earlier we had a video talking about how do they size septic tanks right so remember we were talking about if you have a three bedroom home they're going to assume two people per bedroom and each bedroom will basically equate to 150 gallons of water right so if you have a three bedroom home that's 450 gallons of water as a daily flow now a hydraulic load test is basically to see can that system whatever system has been installed function at the design peak right so let's just say we, we stick with that three bedroom home. Let's say it's occupied with four people. Well, if it's occupied with four people, we wanna make sure we put a little bit of water through, but we also have to account for that it is lived in. So we don't wanna put an entire 450 gallons of water through because people actively live here, right? So generally in Maryland, the way that we look at hydraulic load tests is if it's an occupied home, you wanna put roughly half of whatever the design spec is. So if it's 450 gallons total uh, water capacity per day, you wanna put about 225 gallons of water through the system to make sure that everything's draining correctly, right? So how that's done, this can be done in a number of ways. The most common way is to hook a hose up to a spigot, run that spigot directly into the outlet line so we don't stir up the uh, solids inside the tank. Alternative ways that you can do this is you can just run a bathtub. You could run a hose directly into the distribution box. That's the most easy ways to do it. It's harder to do a hydraulic load test from the home because it's a little bit more difficult to figure out how much water you're actually putting into the system, right? So if you're doing a hydraulic load test on that three bedroom house, remember we're trying to hit 225 gallons of water as our, as our test. What you're gonna do is you're gonna hook a hose up to a spigot. You run that spigot outside, you get a five gallon bucket, you fill that bucket with a stopwatch, right? Let's just say that it gives you five gallons per minute, right? So now what you do is you take your 225, divide that by five, and that tells you how many minutes you have to leave that hose in that outlet line. After you're doing that, basically what you're looking for is gonna see what happens, right? Ideally nothing, right? Whenever you're doing an inspection on a septic system, you don't wanna see anything happen at all because that means something probably went wrong. So if you're doing the test, the goal of this is to see are the drain fields draining correctly. So the best practice is to identify the drain fields first, probe them, see what do they look like? Are they dry? Are they wet? Are they kind of wet, but they're not quite saturated throughout. And then you do your test and then you probe again, right? The reason why you want to do that is so if you're going to have dry drain fields, let's just say that we got that three bedroom house still, we have dry drain fields, we got two of them. We probe them, they're dry, they're good to go. We put 225 gallons of water in them. And now the first third of both drain fields is super wet, right? But the rest of it's dry. That means that it's not draining well, but it's draining enough to where it's working, right? But let's go ahead and say that you probe it in the beginning, it's completely saturated. You introduce your water. Let's just say you put a hundred gallons in and immediately the water level in the tank rises up and submerges the outlet line. Well, that's a backup, that's a problem, right? Meaning that the drain field's not draining correctly and so we already knew that the drain field was not working because it was wet. We put water in basically that confirms our, our hypothesis, right? So a hydraulic load test, why would that be used? Again, it's for functionality to make sure the system's working, but it's also a diagnostic tool, right? So in the moment, a moment ago, that example I just gave with the wet drain field first, if I suspect that a drain field is failing, or if I think that you have an issue with your absorption system, the easiest way to confirm my suspicion is to run water and see what it does, right? Usually if your drain field has failed, they fail in some weird ways, but most of the common ways that you'll see that you have a failed drain field is it will either back up towards you or will come up out of the ground, right? It just depends on the soil and the type of system that you have. Most commonly in our area, if you have a failed drain field, it's gonna come back to the tank, right? There are some circumstances where it will bubble up, but that's not as common unless you have a pressurized system, right? 
Your area might be slightly different. It all depends on your soil and how deep the system is. Most of the systems in our area, the drain fields are about three feet or more below the surface. Water will always go where the path of least resistance is, right? So if it's easier for the water to go up, guess what it's doing? It's going up. If it's easier for it to go back, it's going to go back, right? So just because of the depth of the soil types that we have around here, generally a failed drain field will come back towards the tank. So the hydraulic load is a uh, term, again, used for running water. We want to see, does, does the system work as designed, right? We know that we want to put about half of the design spec through it. Is the system failing and we're just confirming it? And then the other reason that you want to do that is to make sure that the soils are playing nice, right? Let's just say, for example, that we have a home that sat vacant for the last two years, right? Bank foreclosure, for example. So we got our bank foreclosure, house has sat vacant, system hasn't been touched for a while. The drain fields look pretty good, right? Or a dry well looks pretty good. We run water, we put our hydraulic load in. Now, a house that's been vacant for that long, we're probably gonna wanna go ahead and run a full peak, peak flow, right? That would be 450 and some change gallons of water. 450 gallons of water is very important to put through that full system to make sure that it's still doing what it's supposed to do, right? So if you have a system that sat for a while, what will happen is a lot of that water that might have been there for a normal conventional system will actually drain away, which is good, but it makes it really hard to see, is it currently functional, right? So let, let's just say, for example, that we go to this house, we probe it, it's dry. We run water, we see that it fills up immediately with a little bit of water, right? So now it's kind of saturated. So the next best thing to do wait a day do it again right so let's just say monday you come in you put you know 300 gallons of water in it's kind of wet you probe it you come back tuesday do it again to see is that still wet did it dry out did it get worse right and the reason why is because if it sat vacant for a while that system could have failed two three years ago but because it sat vacant for so long it's had time to dry out, but it never got rid of the uh, biomat that's in there, kind of plugging up all the pores of the soil. So what can happen is once you start occupying the house, running water on a regular basis, you could resaturate everything, and then now you're back to a failed system. So a hydraulic load test is good and useful to help identify where the system's functioning, where it might not be functioning, and it also kind of just helps you see what is it doing, right? In a poorly constructed septic system, right? Let's just say that you put a drain field running downhill. Uh, it's kind of in a wet, marshy land area. By doing the hydraulic load test, you're actually probably going to see that that water level will back up and surface, right? So a hydraulic load test will help you to identify poor construction methods, right? Now, it doesn't really help you if you didn't know that your system was poorly constructed until somebody else comes in and runs the water, but it does help whoever's having the inspection done so that way they know what they're working with, right? I hope that this was useful information for you. Uh, let me know in the comments. Have you guys ever had a septic inspection? Like, how did that system go? Like, did they have uh, a hydraulic load test conducted during the inspection? Who did it? Was it somebody who's licensed? Was it your home inspector? Was it somebody who's a septic company? Tell me below. I'm very curious. If you like this kind of content, hit that like button. Hit subscribe. I have more videos posted every day on the world of well and septic. I hope this was useful. Till next time, guys.